Hey everybody, it's Tim again. I um, want to talk a little bit about this book today, Quag Keep. Uh, I posted something about it a while ago, and and there were a couple of comments that everybody was uniformly, you know, happy about seeing the book, and because it's it's a seventy seven publication. This is my copy, which is actually in shockingly good shape for its age. Uh, Quag Keep by Andre Norton, and one of the things I found interesting about it is everybody kept saying uh, in the comments he was a good writer. He was a good writer. And how did that book come to happen and, and whatnot? So we're going to talk about it a little bit because it was a mis it was a, 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 a few people that were a little bit wrong. So let's just set the record straight. So uh, this book is, is set in Greyhawk, even though it has no mention of TSR or Greyhawk on it. Uh, it's the first ever novelization of Dungeons and Dragons. Well, you know, how is that possible, right? It was still very early on and uh, it was this game that was sort of had this underground community and uh, uh, it wasn't clear that uh, it was ever going to, you know, become what it, it became um, throughout the 80s and, and now today. Uh, but here it is. One of the best fantasy writers that was around there at the time wrote, you know, something fantastic, wrote this novel, which is fantastic. Uh, is it really Dungeons and Dragons? Well, there it is. Greyhawk, right? Right at the top of the page. You can see right there. Greyhawk, out of Greyhawk. Um Written, published in 1978, Andre Norton, uh, cover art by Jack, uh, you can see right there. I cannot pronounce that last name. I'm not going to butcher it. Um, so how did this happen? Well, in, in 1976, Andre Norton uh, was invited by Gary Gygax to, to try out the world. Gary and Andre and her, not his, her son got together and played the game. She loved it so much that, that she wrote the book. Uh, it first appeared as a, an outset in uh, uh, issue 12 of Dragon Magazine, which someday I'm going to have to go find a copy of that magazine, uh, that issue to go with this copy of the book, just to say I have it. Um, and, you know, because I'm that kind of nerd. Uh, but the uh, the interesting thing is everybody kept telling me, oh, he and it's it, Andre Norton was actually a woman. Uh, not that that's surprising. I'm just saying that everybody kind of assumed uh, Andre Norton was a man and that's not the case. Well, that's really fast, right? So it, the book came out in 77. This was in 76. It, they had to have been trying the, the, that first uh, publication that was out there, right? Lost Caverns of, of oh, I cannot pronounce that one either. Not going to try. Maybe Dungeon Delver can help us out. Uh, but, uh, you know, that, that was it. Uh, Gary, Andre Norton, and her son played the game. Uh, had to be Lost Caverns of, of that uh, that led to this one. Uh, and, uh, you know, the rest is history. That, by the way, is a, uh, a picture of the author, if you've never seen her before. Uh, anybody surprised by that? I, I I was kind of surprised she looks a lot like my grandma, but, um, you know, my grandma's long since passed away, but, you know, the, the look kind of the same. Um, so anyway, that sets the record straight. That is the, uh, the, the history of Quag Keep in, you know, three minutes or less. Uh, I hope everybody, um, if you have not read it, if you if you give it a shot, it is really well worth it. It's not terribly long. It's less than 200 pages. Uh, it's it, the older publications are difficult to find. Uh, you don't see too terribly many of them anymore. Uh, but, you know, it it uh, is one of those those books that's that's worth finding a copy of. Uh, it is available on Kindle. Um, and if you have Kindle Unlimited, it's actually free to read. Uh, I think it's $3.99 or something if you want to purchase it. So you, you can pick it up. It is out there. Uh, there is even a sequel uh, called Return to Quag Keep. Uh, I think you can get them as an omnibus, but um, I, I've never actually seen I heard about it once. But uh, anyway, so that sets the record straight. I uh, hope everybody is uh, having a great day. Uh, click like, subscribe, follow along. You know, I love uncovering these little mysteries that people have these misconceptions about and kind of setting the record straight, especially on books that I love. So there it is, 1977 publication. That is obviously not something I purchased in 1977 because I would have been five years old. Uh, that actually turns out to be my dad's copy because uh, he was a huge fan of her. So um, anyway, uh, everybody have a great day.